There are no longer any heavy bombers based at Coningsby or indeed the rest of the UK. But fear not, these bomb-proof Cold War hangars are now home to something else, something far more potent, the Eurofighter Typhoon. This is it, arguably the most capable aircraft the RAF has ever possessed. And it just goes to show what can happen if you lock aero engineers from Germany, Italy, Spain and Britain in a room and leave them there for long enough. That's exactly what they did back in 1988 and this is what they came up with 15 years later. Much of its design is still top secret. That red bag on the front there, that's covering up the air intake. I'm not allowed to show it to you, it's that sensitive. It can carry a suite of weapons, you name it, it can do it, air to air, air to surface. And here, this is the business end. Two EJ200 engines, each one developing some 20,000 pounds of thrust. That means the Eurofighter can travel at 1.8 Mach. That's nearly twice the speed of sound. It really is a phenomenal piece of engineering. And when you consider, what, 100 years ago, we were just about getting into the air, Look where we've come. This is the future. This is the 21st century fighter in all its glory. U Koningsby je stalno smješteno između 40 i 50 tajfuna. Pripadaju četirima Rafalin eskadrilama. Well, Justin, that's the future, isn't it? The Typhoon. Yeah. We don't longer talk about heavy bombers in terms of the RAF's infantry. What brought about their decline? We've gone away from heavy bombers as such uh, and into a more multi-role fighter aircraft. But the effect is the same. The, we can still deliver bombs on target with a multi-role aircraft like Typhoon. Uh, and the difference is we don't need to carry as many because we can precisely put those bombs where we'd like to. And in terms of that capability, how flexible is it? Because in the old days we'd have bomber pilots and we'd have fighter pilots. Now. As a typhoon pilot, you have to do both. We have to do all roles, yeah. So our, our two squadrons, our two frontline squadrons here at Coningsby, the pilots are trained in all roles. Uh, and, and we can swing from one to the other almost on a daily basis. Now going back, say, 70 years to those heady mm. days during the war when Bomber Command possessed thousands of aircraft, is it possible to equate a squadron of typhoons, say, to a number of squadrons in terms of the punch that they can pack? You could always go back to what the effect is you want. So if you want to take down, let's say, go to World War II, a number of factories, you would, you would calculate how many bombs you would need to, uh, to do that uh, and get actually on target. Then you'd work back and say, well, this would take 20 Lancasters. And with the accuracy of those weapon aiming systems uh, and the bomb itself, that, that's probably how much you'd need. Uh, with Typhoon, we can say, um, that bomb will go in that particular place. We don't need as many aircraft to do the same mission because the, the technology allows us to be more precise in what we're delivering. Now we do live in very different times. The threats that are posed towards the United Kingdom now come in varying forms. Yes. How quickly can your boys get airborne? Um, how long is this piece of string? And we like to keep people guessing <laughs> with that particular question. Yeah. I mean, every minute of every day, we've, we're ready to, to tackle whatever threat is, is put the UK's way, and you know, we're here to defend our skies. Justin, you've had the chance to fly some of the most iconic aircraft that the RAF have possessed over the last 75 years, starting with the Spitfire and now currently on the Typhoon. What's your favourite? Uh, it's a it's a difficult question. I, as you say, I've flown some some pretty serious hardware. Um, Typhoon is uh, the most awesome fighter jet that I've flown. Uh, the power it has is, is truly remarkable. However, the, the Spitfire just has that X factor. Uh, it is it's iconic. It carries with it uh, a lot of history, uh, a lot of uh, of memories, uh, and it is a, a true fighter pilot's aircraft. So the, the Spitfire has it. When you fly a Spitfire, your mind must cast itself back to the days when that was developed uh, and to those men who flew it. I, I had one particular moment flying a Spitfire over Kent where I realised I was flying through the same airspace that the Battle of Britain happened you know, 75 years ago. 
Uh, and that was quite an emotional moment when I, uh, you know, I sat in a Spitfire in that bit of airspace. So we're very proud of our history and that ethos carries on today with the fighter pilots across the runway here on the front lines. Coningsby is a survivor. It was christened in the 1940s. It evolved through the Second World War, the Cold War, and today remains very much at the front line of Britain's air defences here in the 21st century. Its aircraft from the Battle of Britain Memorial flight with its Hurricanes, Spitfires, and of course its Lancaster, through to its modern squadrons of sophisticated typhoons, in many respects encapsulate the story of the RAF. But also there's something else. Not only does it capture its spirit, it also points the way to its future.